Hey, Tim Munkert here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Emacs on a Chromebook, like a boss. Okay, the first thing that you need to do is you need to turn off the Play Store. So let's go to settings. We really don't, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to explain why as well. So we go to settings and we go to remove Play Store. And we'll just remove it. Now, you don't need to do this, but I always do this when I set up a new Chromebook because it does take a little bit of RAM running the container for the Google Chrome Store or the Google Play Store in the background. And you don't need it for Emacs, okay? Next thing I'm going to do is go over here. If I didn't have this terminal pinned, I would go over here and I would go to, and I would type in settings. You, you see it pops up for me. Click on settings. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to advanced, to developers, and to the Linux development environment, and I'm going to click turn on. Okay. I'm going to click next. I'll take the recommended size and the recommended username they give me. You can change this, and you can change the size either now by clicking on custom or later on. Okay. So I'm going to click install, and that's going to go ahead and install. And once that does, I'll come on back. Okay, once Linux installs, you'll see this terminal pop up. Now what you need to do is make sure that everything is up to date. And to do that, we can type sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. And I'm gonna use the flag dash y. And what that's gonna allow is for it to just update without asking me if it needs to use extra space. It's typically very small, so it's no big deal. So I'm going to hit enter and I'll come on back. Okay, now it's updated. To clear out this terminal screen, I can do control L. Okay, now it's clear. So what we want to do is install Emacs. So to do that, we can do sudo apt install Emacs. And I'm going to do the dash Y flag again. It's going to take about 200 megabytes or so. I'll come on back once that's done. Okay. Emacs has gone ahead and installed. I'm going to clear out my terminal. And I'm actually going to shut it down by typing Control D. Okay, and I can close this out. I can close out my settings as well. And I can go here and I'll see that I have an Emacs showing up. So I have the icon showing up. I can right click and click pin to shelf. And you want to do this because you're going to be using Emacs a lot. Okay. So now let's open up Emacs. I'm just going to click on the uh, icon and it's going to open up the GUI form of Emacs, which is very nice. Okay. This is the initial startup screen. It's kind of small, could be larger. Um, but what we can do is we can customize it to get it to look and feel the way you want. Okay. So let's get it full screen when it starts up. To do that, I'm going to type Alt X or Meta X. It's typically Meta X and Meta is the Alt key on many keyboards. So we're going to type Alt X and then down here, you'll see my cursor moves down here. I'm going to type Customize and I can either do a space or a dash, but it'll insert the dash for me. So Customize Dash Options or Option. Customize Option. Sorry. And they're going to talk about the, uh, or next is going to appear, the customize variable option. What I want to type in here to get a full screen is default frame a list. And I can autocomplete with tab once I type the, start typing the a list. I'm going to hit enter. And we're going to see nothing down here, but we're going to go over here to INS for insert. You'll see if I hover over it, it says insert a new item into the list at this position. I'm going to click on insert and the parameter is going to be full screen and the value is going to be maximized. I'm going to go up here and click apply and save. Now I can shut down Emacs with control X, control C, and I just hold down the control button and type XC. So control XC, control X, control C. And now to start it back up, I'll just click back on this icon. And you'll see, wow, 
it starts up full screen. So that's pretty nice. Now, what I like to do is let's increase the font. So we can go to options. We can go to set default font. And you'll see it's Cuisine Regular. <clears throat> I'm going to have coffee because I'm getting a little scratch in the back of my throat. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. So now we're going to do Cuisine Regular. And let's go up to, or Cuisine, whatever. Go up to, let's go up to 20. And we'll select that. And now it's big so you can see it. We're going to go and save the options. Okay. All right. Now let's say I want to get rid of the toolbar mode and the menu bar and the scroll bar. Well, I can do that as well. I can do Alt X, customize option. Okay. And then I can customize the variable. And what I can do is I can go to toolbar mode. So I can type in toolbar mode and you'll see that it's on. I can toggle this off, nil and click apply and save. And now the toolbar goes away. Let's do the same thing for the menu bar. So we'll do Alt X and we'll do, oops, let's try that again. Alt X, customize option. I can just hit the up arrow to get the previous command. So customize option, and then we'll type menu bar mode. I'll hit enter and you'll see we can toggle it to off. I'm gonna click apply and save and the menu bar goes away. Nice. Okay, now let's get rid of the scroll bar. So let's make sure we're saved. So we saved it. It wrote to the .emacs file in my home directory. So I'm going to do Alt X and do an up arrow to get back to customize option. You could also just type out customize dash option. Hit enter. We want to do scroll bar mode. Hit enter. You'll see the value menu has it on the right, which it is right here. You can click on this and go to none and then click apply and save. Okay. And then it goes away. All right. So we've gotten rid of the scroll bar. Last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is changing the theme. So you can do alt X and then customize themes. And you can go here and change it to one of the themes here. Let's do Mr. Mysterioso. You could save it with that color. It's pretty nice. Or you can uh, get a theme as a package. And to do that, we'll do Alt X and I'm going to do package dash list dash packages. And that's going to refresh the packages from Elpa. Okay. And we can take a look and scroll down and see what kind of packages we have. Okay. So let's go up here and we see we have a hungry theme. Okay. So I could click on this and I can go here and click on install. Install package a hungry theme 1.0.0. I'm going to say yes. Okay. Now I can just go here and do control X1 to get back to one end, one window, or one frame rather, one frame. And then I can do alt X and customize themes again. And you'll see a hungry shows up. Let's click on that. It's going to ask me if I can run it or if I want to run it because it can run list code. I'm going to say yes. Treat this theme as safe in future sessions. I'm going to say yes. Okay. And now it switches to this new cool theme with this cool status bar here. I'm going to click save theme settings. And now let's close this out with control X, control C. And let's reopen it. And we see that we have the new theme. Now, lastly, I'll just throw in a bonus here. Let's say we wanted to get rid of this welcome screen when we start up. So I'm going to search for inhibit startup screen Emacs. I'm going to click on that. So we have this nice stack overflow post here, unable to hide welcome screen in Emacs. So someone was asking for this as a help. And I'm going to just accept the cookies here. And you see this nice answer from this uh, person here. It says, set Q, inhibit startup screen, and then T. So I'm going to copy this. Okay. I'm going to do Control C to copy. And then I'm going to go here. I'm going to do Control XD to go into Dear Ed. And 
I'm going to go to my .emacs file and you'll see it's written all this code for me. So what I'm going to do is uh, alt shift period to go to the end of the file and I'm going to just paste this bit of code in here. Set Q inhibit startup screen T. I'm going to do control X, control S to save. And I can hold down the control T, control key and do XS to save it. Now I'm going to quit with control X, control C. Okay. And then I'm going to restart. And you'll see it restarts with this nice scratch buffer. And we have this A hungry theme, which is pretty cool. It's a dark theme to write my code or to write my uh, markdown files or org files. Pretty cool. And we set up Emacs on a Chromebook. And you can get going and you can customize it in any way you want. I have videos on that on my channel. Or you could just use it pretty much as is. Um, you could even not install the A hungry theme, although I think it's pretty cool. And you could just get going and do your Emacs and have fun with it. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give this video a like and share with friends and also consider subscribing as it really does help the channel grow. I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.